I don't know. I've been drunk for the better part of the last three years, so I honestly don't know what's happening anymore. What a uh, job. There's your cold open, by the way. In hops we trust. Today, we're in New Jersey, visiting the Oranges, home to the Four City Brewing Company. Four City glasses innovative and mouthwatering beer from a vibrant and diverse taproom, a reflection of the local art and music communities they serve at the intersection of taste and culture. Now I have the honor and the privilege of being joined by one of the co-founders of Four City Brewing, Roger Apollon Jr. How are you today, sir? I'm doing well. Excellent. Really, really well. Excellent, excellent. Great day. The story of Four City Brewing is an in-depth one. Like most things, it's a, it's a craft beer people. It's a passion, right? Uh, I got into craft beer 10 years ago. I went to the Total Wine in West Orange where I live and I had a Paul Lanner Oktoberfest mm -hmm. set me down the path. And then I had the beer that changed it for me, which was the Founders Backwoods Bastard. I mean, I never tasted such a beer. You know it's a good beer when your friends come over? Yo, what is this? And that's what, so that set me down this path. Long story short, I started a, a bottle share out of my house. Mm -hmm. Once a month, guys would come over. We'd have a menu of beers. This went on for about three, three or four years. We were developing our palates. While this is happening, I said, you know what? I'm a, you know, I used to be an advertising guy. So I said, you know what? Let's make up some polos. Call ourselves the Brew Council, right? Because I thought I'm a Style Council guy. Any Style Council fans? No? No? Uh, Paul Weller? No? Okay. Am I too old? Okay. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there, Ralph. Um, so the Brew Council? No, not at all. Not even. <laughs> Am I ever changing moods? Okay. So, uh, so we make these polos and we go to brew at the zoo. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Twenty of us show up, brew at the zoo, and people are like, "What are you guys?" And we're like, "Ah, we're just a friend group." But you know, we get a little lubricated. So now we're like, "Oh, we're uh, beer experts. We do beer tastings." Mm -hmm. Never, never, we're doing any of that. <laughs> that week, I'm getting emails in my inbox. Can you do this 50th birthday party pairing? I was like. Sure. Why not? And me and Anthony, uh, two of us are doing research and doing this. And we do that for about two years. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, I go to a private party in West Orange. Three people who didn't I didn't know recognize me from the brew counts because now we have 150 people on this private Facebook page. They're like, uh, do you guys brew beer? I'm like, nah. So the first two people, I said, we don't brew beer. Mm -hmm. The third person, I said, you know what? Damn it. Yes, we do brew beer. And that was six years ago. And right around that time, Jeff, my other partner, IT guy, he was trying to start his own brewery. So the three of us decided, let's pull our resources. And so far, it's been amazing. We're right next to the train. We're getting a lot of commuter traffic before COVID, obviously. This is the first time in 40 years that yes. brewing has come back to the Oranges? Yes. Tell so us about that. in 1901, the Winter Brothers mm -hmm. started the first brewery, Orange Brewing Company. Mm -hmm. Not too far away, like a couple blocks away. They brewed beer consistently uh, right around the 70s and 80s. It changed over and Rheingold was being brewed up until 1981, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, going into the history, that's where the name comes from, right? It's uh, the, the, the four oranges are essentially why this is called Four City. Exactly. Although I was born in Newark, grew up in West Orange. Uh, Orange, which we are in right now. Mm -hmm. I went to high school in the East Orange and uh, South Orange, which I had lots of relatives and friends. So. As a kid, everybody went to all the oranges. It all used to be orange. Mm -hmm. It's all about bringing it all together. This is why craft beer is so important. I exactly. would say beer is a backdrop to building community. That's all it is. Exactly. That's all it is. Tell me mm. about some of the things that you're brewing here mm. that incorporates that philosophy, that mm. idea. The miseducation of Laurel Hops, which is what I'm drinking right now. Mm. Which obviously is a pop culture reference right? to the great Lauren Hill. Who lives in South Orange, New Jersey. That's it, bringing it all back. Right. right? Bringing it all back. Um, we have four core beers, the keg stand lager, mm -hmm. flagship, you know, if Budweiser had a younger sister who went to grad school, right? That would be keg stand because she's smart as hell, but she can still party, right? So Citrus City, <laughs> right? Citrus City is the 5.5% pale ale, right? <laughs> you can drink that, it's crushable. Miseducation, 7% IPA straight ahead. And the four city stout, the 4.7% stout, because why should Guinness have all the fun? Let's talk about some of the collabs that you are recently, are currently doing, have recently done. I think our very first collab, I want to say, was Hoboken Brewing. Okay. Uh, Hopulation density that we have on tap now. We got really close because, full disclosure, during COVID, 
we didn't have a canning line. Mm. They had a canning line that was getting shipped to their location that was not going to open now because of COVID. So they had their canning and their label. They said, can we ship it here? Yep. And can we learn how to use, and we could both use the canning machine and the labeler. Yep. And it saved our business. Oh, we did collab with our dudes Hackensack, mm -hmm. um, Mike, Mike Jones, Herb, Herb Bar, right? The whole crew. Love those guys. Um, for our, our second anniversary. Um, elementary, Blake and Mike at, at Elementary, they run a really excellent, like I emulate, uh, I want to emulate the way they run their organization. And then um, Harlem Hops, Black Owned Brewery in, in Harlem, uh, they wanted to collab with Harlem Blue, Black Owned Brewery there. Um, and a guy, St. Cassius, a hip hop guy, it's a beer called La Renaissance du Monde. It sold out last year, it's a Belgian triple that we're doing again for Black History Month this year. That's in line with what our mission is. Oh boy. Hey, the In Hops We Trust app is the best way to follow all things In Hops related. On the app, you'll find the In Hops passport, rewards, crew info, updates on where we'll be for events, or where we might be filming next. The app is also the only place you'll be able to see certain content, like pre-release episode teases or behind-the-scenes footage and exclusive content from event appearances. <laughs> Our app is available on both iOS and Android devices. So please, go download it while I grab another beer. Oh, cheers. Hey, give me a tall boy. Now, I came across some, quite frankly, staggering numbers when I was doing research for your brewery. As of 2020, 8,000 craft breweries exist in the United States. Okay, I think that number's obviously gone up. 60 are black owned. In New Jersey alone, there's 100 craft breweries. Three are black owned, 88% white, 4% American Indian, 4% Alaskan, 2% Asian, 2% Hispanic. That leaves less than 1% black owned. Why is that the case? I feel it's kind of salty that we're behind like Alaskan. Alaskan! <laughs> Alaska? Ala Alaskan no disrespect, natives not, have more breweries. I mean, I mean, no disrespect, but wow. The update is uh, 9,000 breweries nationwide. 9,000, okay. Uh, 90 black owned. We gained 30. 30. 30 yes. in yes. two years. Uh, asterisk. <laughs> Out of that 90, less than 40% actually have a brick and mortar. So wow. a lot of them are contract brewing. So that's another, that's a funding and access to resources that's a whole other issue. And on the New Jersey front, it's 120 breweries now, over 120, mm -hmm. but the number is still three. It's still three. <laughs> but that's the magic number. <laughs> yes, it is. Plain and simple, craft beer takes money. Mm. So the people who invest in this stuff, this is not their last X amount of dollars. If it folds or it, it's a vanity project, generally, mm. is what I'm saying. It's a hobby and if it makes money, it's great. A lot of those people who have that kind of income don't look like me. Yeah. Right, uh, and we don't have to go into the reasons why, but that's just the way it is. Generally, I ask, like if a white person was to drive by a brewery and looked inside and saw a whole bunch of black people inside. Would he go in? <laughs> would you go in? Right. I don't know what the answer is, but I feel like the real answer is and the reason why. Also, let's keep it 100%. Like, you know, generational wealth is just like, we don't, black people don't have it. And craft beer is the back door to that. I didn't want to be, I wasn't trying to be the only one of three black breweries in the state. I wasn't trying to be one of 90. I was just trying to drink this beer for free. Yeah, you're just trying to make some beer. <laughs> That's really my ambition. Mm -hmm. But well, now that I have the platform, I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm in a position to actually inspire other people to get involved in this game. Well, sign me up. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm starting a brew training program. You need to see it, you need to touch it, you need to believe it. I know for me, I didn't think trying, trying a new craft beer from Total Wine 10 years ago, mm -hmm would put me here right that's and that's all i'm saying and it's access when i go to the inner city what are the beer choices at the liquor store probably not paul anner so that's another thing you know it's like there are steps we have to get into to it's i, I think a lot of people look at they look at black culture and they want to extract from it and make their own as opposed to extracting the people and there are more than enough quali quali super qualified people of color, LBGTQ, whatever, women. That's another thing, women. And this is why craft beer culture is so important. I, we have to be, as brewery owners, we have to be the ones to be the keeper of the culture. Mm -hmm. This can't just be a cash grab. Yes, yeah. make money. Yes, pay your families, but man, respect the game.
If you're watching this video of Inhoffs We Trust and you're asking yourself, hey there, Danny, where'd you get that fancy looking t-shirt? Well, I'll tell you, Manny, I got it at InhoffsWeTrustFilm.com. That's InhoffsWeTrustFilm.com. Now, if you're looking at this shirt and you're wondering, gee, what is that fancy shirt called? Well, I'll tell you, it's called Essence of Ralph. But that's not all you can find on InhoffsWeTrustFilm.com. You'll also find hats, hoodies, other t-shirts besides this beautiful one right here. Anything your heart desires that has our brand printed on it, you can find at InhoffsWeTrustFilm.com. Get over there. Out. <laughs> hey, bro, you're a. <laughs> hey, bro, what's really good with you? Another thing that's very unique about this place is your relationship with the organization Can Be. I don't know what your belief is in the afterlife and the spirituality of things. I believe you really you get back what you put out. So I'm sitting at one of these tables over here one day. See this dude with dreads knocking on the window. I'm like, all right, I don't have any money, dude. So you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> not playing for <laughs> He didn't look homeless. Just just for the record, Brian did not look homeless. Oh, whatever. He's knocking on the door. He's like, hey man, like who does your art? I came in, I saw artwork on the wall, and I said, hey, would you be open to like letting Canvy curate? And then he was like, all right, I'll show you what I got. I think next day we set up a meeting. He came in, he brought in all these prints that were so dope. Um, I started talking to all of the artists, like, hey man, I think I got uh I can put some extra eyeballs on your artwork and We've just kind of kind of grown from there, and this partnership has been phenomenal ever since. Get this, you come to the brewery, you see a piece of art, you QR code it, it pops up on your screen, you can buy it, mm -hmm. and if you live in the radius of the brewery, you can have it delivered to your house, frame to unframed, within two days. I live for this, and I have to work with people who live for what they do. We have a few uh, slogans or mantras. One of the uh, mantras is, top tier artist premium artwork. Mm. Because there's a lot of art out there. Some art is just hard to deny the visual right. appeal yeah, of it. It's all quality, it's absolutely. Our goal with all of this, besides captivating the audience or the consumer, mm -hmm. is that we want to be able to advance the individual art agenda of any artist that partners with the brand. He reached out to me on uh, Instagram. And he was like, yo, you know, I love your work. You think it's, it's dope, da, da 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 And he was like, let's meet up. And I was like, yeah, sure. Then, like, he told me about the company, how it was founded and everything. And I, 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 I was like, yo, like, let's, let's make things happen. I, I, I think this is a great fit. Um, what you're providing is dope. And, and more importantly, what I fell in love with was the, was the quality that he was searching for. For you to still have a print of somebody's work, but it still feels like the actual work, you won. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> you won right there. We here at Inhoffs We Trust are feeling a little bit inspired being in this art gallery that's a so-called brewery. We are going to create a work inspired by beer. Best of luck to you guys. I wonder who's going to win. I was going to say, uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to fail on this. May wow. the, the best painter win. Brushes down. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Good job Cheers. on the first ever in house we trust painting challenge. Hans, tell us a little bit about your picture. <laughs> this masterpiece right here was inspired by the brewery, right? Mm. Had a had a beer can, and of course had to add the logo number four, mm -hmm. and uh, had to give a shout out to, to my Haitian project. Hey, Sac Um Yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, for me. I went with the obvious love all. Mm. Beer is all inclusive. <laughs> and it's it's made in this, you know, crazy mess that it is to put the brewing process together. Mm. You know the struggle. I do know the struggle. We've heard the struggle. The streets. I think, I think, uh, think uh, <laughs> mine's more of a social commentary. Uh, <laughs> underneath the scribbles, there's a tulip glass with beer inside of it. Yeah, and then at then the color the corners, you know, they're bright because I had yellow. Yeah, I'm chase. yes, happiness and joy are surrounding the chaos. Yeah. I think we've, I think we've learned a couple things today. <laughs> yep. One is a paint is very messy. It is. Uh, two is that art, as long as you're passionate about it and can stand behind it, can be truly anything. Either works of art or, or you know. Or, um, <laughs> <laughs> If you find yourself Arts in, of work. in Essex County, specifically the oranges, come check out 
for City Brewing. Because not only are they beer lovers, they are art lovers. If you're on the internet saying, boy, I wish I could put some cool shit on my walls, check out Canby. They are featuring my main man right here, Han Solo Lundy. <laughs> Remember to like, share, and subscribe this video. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Hans. It's been a pleasure. Gentlemen, cheers. Cheers. Yeah, cheers to you. Yeah. Support local art. Support local breweries. In Hops We Trust. Want another beer? Check out our channel, In Hops We Trust Film. There you'll get all our latest content, including new episodes, tastings, and all things In Hops related. Cheers. In Hops We Trust is an Ambassador Studios production.